Hello, my name is Dennis Kolke and I'm a Regional Technical Manager with Avery Dennison's Label and Packaging Materials Division. Today I'm going to be talking about converting with PET 23 liner. Before I discuss how to use it though, I should explain why you'd want to use it. And the first benefit of using any polyester liner is its extraordinary tensile strength, which helps to prevent web breaks on high speed label application equipment. This means less downtime for your customer, but it can also mean fewer web breaks and less downtime in the press room. Second, at 23 microns or 0.92 mils, this liner is less than half the thickness of a paper liner and is also thinner than most other polyester liners. The advantage of a thinner liner is that you can increase the number of labels in each roll without increasing roll diameter. The end result is there's less space required for storage, less waste is produced, there are potentially fewer roll changeovers on press, and finally there are also fewer roll changeovers for your customer on their application equipment. In addition to the productivity benefits, polyester liner also has a much smoother surface than paper liner, which means a smoother adhesive coat, and therefore greater label clarity. This is important for things like glass, clear polyester, and dark colored containers that tend to make paper liner imperfections much more visible. Now that we've talked about the benefits of PET 23, let's dig into what's required to convert it. Whether you are currently using paper liners and looking to progress into film, or already using polyester and looking to transition into thinner products, the first step is to evaluate your equipment and tooling. Your press should be in good working condition and capable of converting films. Nip rollers should be functioning so that web tension is properly controlled, and the entire web path should be examined for frozen idler rollers or ink and adhesive buildup. If you're currently webbed through a turn bar, consider bypassing it until you've had more experience converting with this liner. Polyester liner is not compressible, like paper, so precision tooling is necessary. Make sure that the dies you intend to use are specifically designed for the face stock and liner combination that you're converting. Your die manufacturer may also recommend a coating, treatment, or hardening process for your tooling that may help to extend its life. For flexible dies, have your supplier verify the suitability of any existing magnetic cylinders and thoroughly inspect them for signs of damage. You'll also want to thoroughly inspect your anvils for signs of wear and damage. If you're using any scoring knives, make certain that the blades are sharp and clean and that they spin freely. If you're having difficulty scoring the liner, using razor knives after matrix stripping also works well. The next step in preparation is making sure you can control the cutting process, so die pressure gauges are definitely recommended. First, they help to monitor the die throughout the run for pressure changes due to heat expansion. Expansion can change the die cut depth. Second, they help to monitor where it can be used as part of a preventative maintenance program so that you have an idea when the dies need to be replaced. The final step in preparation is making sure you have controls in place for the static electricity that film materials tend to generate. Static attracts debris from the air and floor around your press to the web, creating print defects. Static can also cause the web to wrap rollers in your press, resulting in print registration issues. This is particularly important when working with films, as you will also be using lower web tension in the press than you would for a paper liner. To control static and its effects, first, ensure that your press and all inline components like automatic unwind and rewind stations are properly grounded. Frequent shocks or sparks are funny, but also potentially dangerous and are an indicator of a problem. Second, consider installing static control bars before your first print station. If you're using web cleaning equipment, you may also want to investigate placing them before and after the web cleaning station so you don't redeposit debris after removing it. And third, make sure that the press room and especially the area around your press is clean. This is just good housekeeping, but it really does make a difference. Now that the press is prepared for running polyester liner, the next step is to start converting it. To prevent telescoped or dished rolls at the press unwind, try to keep unwind tension below one PLI, which is pounds per linear inch. Note that this is different from PSI, which is pounds per square inch. Low unwind tension is required because film materials are typically wound at very low tension, and if unwound at higher tension, the roll can start to slide. Also, be aware that polyester will stretch when exposed to excessive heat and tension. It will also retract when that tension is released, possibly causing embossing of labels, adhesive ooze, and label shifting on the liner. To avoid these issues, keep UV lamps and dryers on the lowest setting possible while still maintaining ink cure. Also, keep web tension as low as possible while still maintaining print registration. And rewind rolls onto six inch cores instead of three inch cores to prevent compression of the labels that are closest to the core. 
We talked earlier about the use of precision tooling and monitoring die pressure, but during the converting process, you also need to evaluate the die cut during setup and for every roll you produce. For paper liners, most people are familiar with the blueprinting technique and use a marker or die solution to stain the liner. But because polyester is not porous, other techniques are needed. First, remove labels from the liner for the full width and repeat of your die and visually inspect to make certain that there's a clear imprint of the die visible on the liner for each die cavity. During the manufacturing process, we coat the adhesive directly onto the liner so it's in intimate contact with it. If you do not see an imprint or there are gaps in the imprint, there's no way of being certain that the adhesive was completely cut. If the adhesive is not completely cut, it can snap back onto the face stock during the matrix stripping process, which potentially causes adhesive buildup in label application equipment and also labels sticking to the back side of the web. I'm sure you've unwound a roll at one time and heard that tick, tick, ticking sound, and that problem is usually created by an incomplete die cut. In addition to looking for gaps, also inspect the imprint to make sure that the die pressure wasn't so great as to emboss the liner. Adhesive can flow into these deep die cuts and prevent the label from dispensing properly. Next, perform the snap test. This is also done to evaluate for deep die cuts. First, pull a length of die cut web off of the press that is at least twice the die repeat length. Then, cut the web into individual lanes to represent the width of each finished roll. And finally, take each length of labels and individually snap them by pulling in opposite directions using both hands. If the web breaks, inspect the web, die, and anvil for the source of the break. Now that the converting process is complete, the best practice is to finish the rolls immediately. This is done to reduce the impact of web tension and heat from the press. Slitting knives should be clean and sharp to prevent the edge of the finished web from being nicked, which can cause web breaks on label application equipment. The use of rewinding tables or slitting equipment without taper tension capability is not recommended. Rewind tension should start between 1 half and 1 PLI for die cut labels, with tension gradually decreasing from the start to the end of the roll. You will need to experiment with the starting tension and taper settings for each job to find the ideal combination. Finished rolls should allow for easy, fluid motion of the core when pushing on the side of the roll, as in this example. Rolls that are wound too tightly, like this one, can cause adhesive ooze and embossing of labels inside the roll. You can see here, there's really no movement of the roll whatsoever. It's more of a disc than a roll of labels. Now that we've talked about the preparation, converting, and finishing of products with PET 23 liner, you should be ready to start working with it and extending its benefits to your customers. If you have any questions or concerns regarding PET 23 or any Avery Dennison product, please reach out to your Avery Dennison Label and Packaging Materials Division sales representative for assistance. Thank you for your time and attention and have a great day.